Section 53 of Women of History. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Pamela Krantz. Women of History by Anonymous. Anne Killigrew. Born 1660, died 1685. Ballard. The daughter of Dr. Henry Killigrew, prebendary of Westminster, became eminent in the arts of poetry and painting, and had it pleased Providence to protract her life, she might probably have excelled most of the professors in both. She was the Orinda of Mr. Dryden, who seems quite lavish in her commendation, but as we are assured by a writer of great probity, Woods Athena, that she was equal to, if not superior to that praise, let him be my voucher for her skill in poetry. Art she had none, yet wanted none, for nature did that want supply. So rich in treasures of her own, she might our boasted stores defy. Such noble vigor did her verse adorn, that it seemed borrowed where twas only born. The great poet is pleased to attribute to her every excellence in that science, but if she has failed of some of its excellences, still should we have great reason to commend her for having avoided those faults by which some have derived a reflection on the science itself, as well as on themselves. Speaking of the purity and charity of her compositions, he bestows on them this commendation. Her Arethusian stream remains unsoiled, unmixed with foreign filth and undefiled her wit was more than man her innocence a child she was also a great proficient in the art of painting and drew king james the second and his queen which pieces are highly applauded by mr dryden these engaging and polite accomplishments were the least of her perfections, for she crowned all with an exemplary piety towards God, in a due observance of the duties of religion, which she began to practice in the early part of her life. But as her uncommon virtues are enumerated on her monument inscription, I shall only observe that she was one of the maids of honor to the Duchess of York, and that she died of the smallpox in the flower of her age to the unspeakable grief of her relations and all others who were acquainted with her excellences in her father's lodgings, within the cloister of Westminster Abbey, on the sixteenth day of June, 1685, in her twenty-fifth year. Mr. Dryden's muse put on the mourning habit on this sad occasion, and lamented the death of our ingenious poetess in very moving strains, in a long ode, from whence I shall take the liberty of transcribing the eighth stanza, and the rather as it does honor to another female character. Now all those charms that blooming grace the well-proportioned shape and beauteous face shall never more be seen by mortal eyes. In earth the much-lamented virgin lies. Not wit nor poetry could fate prevent, nor was the cruel destiny content to finish all the murder at a blow, to sweep at once her life and beauty too. But, like a hardened felon, took a pride to work more mischievously slow, and plundered first and then destroyed. O oh, double sacrifice as things divine to rob the relic and deface the shrine! But thus Orinda died. Heaven by the same disease did both translate, as equal were their souls, so equal was their fate. End of Anne Killigrew Recording by Pamela Krantz